Quick and Easy, Royal, and Horizon Paper Towers. Good evening and welcome to another episode of Our Climate Reality. For this season, we've been looking at community interventions in various sectors as it relates to climate change. Uh, this evening, we're looking at climate change interventions in our water sector. This evening, three very special guests on the program, Mr. Terence Smith, Mr. Thomas DeBayer, and Mr. Lyndon Bullen. A little later on, um, they'll introduce themselves formally and tell you a little bit about themselves. So climate change is already affecting water access for people around the world, causing more severe droughts and floods. Increasing global temperatures are one of the main contributors to this problem. Climate change impacts the water cycle by influencing where, when, and how much precipitation falls. It also leads to more severe weather events over time. Increasing global temperatures cause water to evaporate in larger amounts which will lead to higher levels of atmospheric water vapor and more frequent, heavy, and intense rains in the coming years. Climate scientists predict that this shift will lead to more floods since more water will fall than vegetation and soil can absorb. The remaining water or runoff drains into nearby waterways picking up contaminants like fertilizer sorry, on the way, excess runoff eventually travels to larger bodies of water like lakes, estuaries, and the ocean, polluting the water supply and limiting water access for humans and ecosystems. This week, we turn our attention to interventions and initiatives in our water sector to help communities build resilience to climate change. Our guests this evening are professionals who have years of experience in the sector. And as I said earlier, a little later on, we'll have them introduce themselves to you. What we'll do now is to take a short commercial break. And when we come back this week in climate, then our guests introduce themselves and we get into our discussion for this evening. Stay with us. We'll be back in just a moment. I am immunized. I am protected. Our children and nation depend on vaccination for immunization. Childhood vaccination is national priority. It is their protection from disease and sicknesses. Let's all be VIPs and safeguard our beautiful Grenada. I am DJ Blackstorm and I am a VIP health champion. Be a VIP like me. Let's all be VIP champions. A message from the Ministry of Health, Wellness and Religious Affairs. Be a VIP childhood vaccination and immunization campaign in collaboration with UNICEF and the Pan American Health Organization. As of October 2nd, 2023, the Hubbard's Rewards Program will have some exciting new features to better serve you. Streamlined loyalty experience. That is, no more waiting for vouchers to be issued on a quarterly basis via traditional mail. Instant redemption. This means loyalty points earned can be redeemed immediately after purchase and applied towards your future cash purchases upon checking out. Check status. You can instantly review your reward points when checking out or on your printed receipt. Sign up today and start saving when you shop at any Hubbard's department, including the Food Fair and Grenadian General Insurance Company Limited. Please note that existing vouchers are still valid once not expired. Hubbard's quality service, affordable prices.
Christmas magical with 100% financing, no payment for three months, win cash prizes, and so much more. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. Your life is yours, your future's in your hands. Your body is yours, that's why you need a plan. You gotta plan your family, avoid HIV, get the education from the green age. For STI screening, gender-based violence counseling, prenatal and postnatal checks, injectables, condoms, pap smears, and other sexual reproductive services. Open Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. The Pointer Street, St. George's. Whether male or female, it doesn't matter. We're here to make your life better. For appointments, call 440-3341. Here is a little known fact. There is only one place in Grenada that you can get an MRI scan done. That place is Spicile Imaging Center. Yes, Grenada, that's the truth. Other centers could offer you other scans, but Spicile Imaging provides an authentic MRI scan. We operate at Grenville and the Carnage. We provide the widest range of laboratory tests and services. CT scans, x-rays, mammograms, ultrasounds, and a host of other services. We are fully staffed by a team of family doctors and specialists. Call us today at 444-7679 or 440-1500 or visit any of our locations. Spice and Imaging, from seeing the doctor to getting lab tests, scans, and pharmacy services. We are here to take care of you. Have you heard about the new Softweed bathroom tissue with Total Hygiene? As hygiene and safety have taken center stage, a bathroom tissue is now manufactured with three different technologies to offer the best protection for you and your family. UVC light technology for a safe and effective disinfection process, eliminating 99.9% .9 of microorganisms. Also, production at high temperatures, killing all types of germs and bacteria. And it's pH controlled with delicate fibers to prevent irritation for even sensitive skin. Soft Weave Total Hygiene Bathroom Tissue. Available in supermarkets and shops island-wide. Visit Soft Weave Caribbean Facebook or Instagram pages for more information. St. George. For more information, call 444-5291 or 404-9012. Our environment is our responsibility. Budget Marine contributes by selling environmentally friendly products. For example, we sell lightweight open boats that require a relatively small engine. Best to combine with our Tohatsu four-stroke engines. They use little fuel and have a low emission. Carib Marine solar panels are specially made to withstand the Caribbean climate. The panels are suitable for use at home and on the boat. The required chargers and converters are also available from Budget Marine. 
Keeping your car and boat clean extends the lifespan. But residues of the cleaning products disappear in nature. We at Budget Marine sell eco-friendly cleaning products from EcoWorks, not harmful to nature and also clean very well. Plastic junk in our oceans is a major problem. Fortunately, there are companies that clean up and reuse the plastic into usable products. Marlow, manufacturer of lines and ropes, produces docking lines made out of plastic waste. Another company is Sperry Shoes. Sperry has a collection made from used fabrics and plastic waste. Just a few examples of how we at Budget Marine contribute to help protecting our environment. We care. Welcome back everyone, it's All Climate Reality. If you're just joining us, it's a pleasure to have you. And of course, uh, we welcome our viewers on GBN Television, 7 and 11, our friends on our Facebook page and the YouTube channel, and also our listeners on K105 FM. Up next, this week in climate, and this evening, Dr. Everson Peters will share with us a little bit about water and climate change. Dr. Peters. Sometimes we overlook um, the impact of temperature. But overall, I think what we are seeing in Grenada, remember Grenada is like a dot, even within the Caribbean. And most of the work that has been done in terms of modeling future impact of climate change really doesn't necessarily capture Grenada per se. Mm -hmm. But we have been observing some trends, some trends here. For example, probably eight, seven, eight years ago, I did uh, some analysis on the severity of dry season and droughts. And what we found was they're becoming more regular, right? They're becoming more regular. Mm -hmm. And that's, of course, that is part from increased temperatures, as Adrian explained. So that uh, we expect, the trend is that we expect in the Southern Caribbean that we would have more intense rains. So the rainfall would be more intense. And how does that impact on our water supply? Well, if the rainfall is more intense, and as Adrian explained, if there is less opportunity for water to, to penetrate the soil, then you have higher runoff. And so that immediately after some rainstorms, you plan the, the rivers high, but thereafter it goes back to a trickle, and that has implication for Nawasa, for, you know, storage. More than that, as Adrian did say, there is increased evapotranspiration. Well, that too reduces the stream flow. It, it impacts on agriculture. But something that is very interesting in terms of a trend, Many years ago, probably 50, 60 years ago, maybe a little more, there were a number of dog wells around Caraco. Mm -hmm. With climate change and with coastal erosion, over time, we have been finding that the water in those wells are becoming saltier. So they become useless. In fact, in growing up, you know, you, during the dry season, you cherish those wells to water your animals. Um, but there is now a challenge that the water become, has become so heavy that even the animals um, refuse to drink it. So the, these are some of the, the impacts and the trends. So the trend really is in terms of saltwater intrusion, for example, the Bailey's Baculet um, borehole is likely to become less um, useful over time. Thank you very much, Mr. Peters. And of course, folks, throughout the course of the program, you'll be hearing a lot more of that. So um, I think I've kept you in suspense long enough. I now have our guests introduce themselves to you. And we'll start, of course, with Mr. Terence Smith. He's no stranger, but nevertheless, um, we'll ask him 30 seconds. Terry, good evening, and it's a pleasure to have you on the program again. 
Thank you, Godfrey. Good evening to you and to your listeners and viewers. Uh, my name is Terence Smith. I am by training a public health engineer and I've been active in Grenada's water sector for several decades. Um, I previously worked at Nawasa for 14 years and I am just in my fifth week um, back with Nawasa from the 1st of November as the acting general manager. So it's my pleasure to have this opportunity to come in your pro on your program and to speak about um, water and climate change with two very qualified colleagues on either side of me. So well, my pleasure. Yes, indeed. And uh, to be on the program again. Yeah. <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, let's ask Mr. Lyndon Bullen to tell us a little about himself. Um, Lyndon, it's your first time on the program, and it's really a pleasure to have you. Thanks for having me. Um, my name is Lyndon Bullen. I'm the Assistant Manager of the Planning and Development Department of Nawasa. Um, I've been at Nawasa for the last over a year and a half now, and I'm mostly aligned to the g -Cruise project where I coordinate the activities between the various stakeholders and Nawasa. Um, my background is mostly in civil engineering, and I also have an environmental science background as well. Thank you very much. I'm looking forward. And of course, uh, Mr. Thomas DeBaya, it's a real pleasure to have you on the program. Welcome. Thank you very much and good evening. Yeah, my name is Thomas DeBaya. I'm coming from Germany. Um, since about a bit more than one year, I'm working here with Nawasa on and off uh, to support Nawasa in all what is water losses. Um, my experience background is I was uh, I once studied geology and then specialized since of more than 15 years now in supporting water utilities on water loss and non-revenue water uh, tasks. Thank you very much and we're looking forward to hearing a lot about the non-revenue water management. So it's time to get into our discussion this evening and I want to go back to Terry. We're going to start with you. Terry, climate change, we know, can seriously impact our water sector. Now, with that understanding, um, what is the general trust of the National Water and Sewage Authority, Nawasa? Yes, Godfrey. Um, let me just premise my response by indicating, of course, we're in November. We're, well, we're, we're in December now. We're at the end of our uh, um, financial year. So the authority is um, more or less transitioning to our 2024 budget. It's not finalized as yet. It should be formally by the board in a, in a few weeks time before the end of this year. So um, what, I, what I'm saying uh, is based on five weeks of kind of hitting the ground running and mindful of the planning that um, others have done you know, during the course of this year. What I can say is that one of the areas of focus of Nawasa going forward um, is not, has nothing really to do with climate change per se, but uh, more so seeking to develop the organization as a professional outfit that's responsible for drinking water supply and sewerage in Grenada. So we are going to be focusing going forward on human resource development. Um, training, etc., um, change management, um, putting our staff in a position to manage the changes that are taking place. I want to emphasize also um, results-based management. We, we're going to try during the coming months to change the focus of all employees to that, the, the approach to management, the approach to getting jobs done, to one of results-based management. We can speak uh, more on that further. Um, integrated water resource management. And if you could just pull up um, that slide um, where we, we speak to integrated water resources management, a process which promotes the coordinated development and management of water, land, and, re and related resources in order to maximize the result and economic and social welfare in an equitable manner without compromising the sustainability of vital ecosystems. Simply put, what we're talking about is managing our watersheds and our catchments 
managing the entire water cycle, as, as we say, from ridge to reef. So there is going to be, I trust, a, a, a greater focus on integrated water resources management, on management and improvement of our catchments, um, et cetera. So these are some of the, these are some of the areas, um, well, non-revenue water management. Um, um, Thomas is going to go into further detail on that. Um, greater use of um, um, solar PV, solar photovoltaics. Um, Engineer Bullen would speak further to that. So these are some of the, the areas, um, uh, some of the thrusts of Nawasa uh, going forward. And we develop, we develop them, I trust, mm -hmm. in the course of this conversation. Oh, definitely. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Bullen, I, I want to come to you. Um, the climate resilient water sector in Grenada, and, and many people have thought of it. I mean, we hear it a lot. G crews. Um, that project aims to make the water sector in Grenada more resilient to climate change and to strengthen the efficiency of its management. Now, how is the project supporting the water sector's comprehensive transformation at all levels. Okay, all right, so the GQ's project, um, it really takes a, a very holistic or systematic approach of trying to address the transformation. Mm -hmm. So it looks at five core areas in which we see the transformation can be taken place. Um, so it looks at the governance, um, that deals with introduction of a water resource management unit, legislation that supports um, conservation of water and so forth, um, tariff reviews. And then the second component deals with the water resilient water users. So it's about changing the mindset of the users and having them become more conscious of, of how we utilize our water to prevent wastage and so on. Um, for this aspect, we have a challenge fund where we target some commercial entities that are, are known for um, high use of water. So we look at the tourist industry, the agricultural industry. And the whole idea behind this challenge fund is to encourage these commercial entities to switch to more efficient devices, um, getting rid of the, the, the more traditional ones that are not as conservative with, with water. Um, apart from them, we have the PR, a large PR campaign to, to, to reach to the general public. Right. The third component is which Nawasa is very heavily involved in, deals with the infrastructural works. And it's the largest chunk of the, of the budget of this project. The budget is a 45 million euro project. Um, about 50% of this or thereabout goes to infrastructural works. So we're looking at introduction of water storage tanks. Um, so far we have 16 AMAC to be completed under the project. Um, I think on the screen you would see 16 of them outlined. The yellow highlighted ones are the group one, which is currently on the way with the designs and um, procurement of the contractor and so forth. The other set, um, we have three already confirmed for Karakul and some others that are prioritized as we see necessary based on the budget, <coughs> right? So we have the tanks, the associated pipelines, and then we have a few other initiatives, rainwater harvesting, dam rehabilitations, and so forth. Um, fourthly, we go to climate resilient, um, basically meeting the climate goals of Grenada. Um, that's where Thomas is going to speak further on, um, with the NRW, the, the Non-Revenue Water Initiatives. We look at um, introduction of solar PVs to, to offset the, the carbon emissions that we use for pumping. And lastly, we have the regional sharing. Um, we use a rare set of platforms and, and medias to share our knowledge with the region. Um, we get their inputs as well. A lot of the regional um, utility companies similar to us, they have similar issues that we have, the challenges. And we get to share our ideas, they share their ideas back. We meet with um, various suppliers and basically have a better understanding of how we could optimize on the results of this project. Okay, wonderful. So thus far, I mean, you, you mentioned a number of things and under the infrastructural aspect of things, how, 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 how successful has this been thus far? It's, it's been good. Um, so component three, where we deal mostly with tanks and pipeline 
introduction, um, construction. We have it right now divided into two groups, group one and group two. Group one is well on the way. Um, we already have the pipeline installation ongoing in Maribor. In a couple of weeks, we'd expect Tufton Hall to be on the way. And by the middle of next year, we'd see Monrouge also coming on stream for the pipelines. Um, similarly, with the, the, the tank construction, we already have a contractor selected. They're currently within mobilization at the moment and fabricating of the tanks and just a few approvals of some designs and so and come early next year we will see some tank construction starting um, by the middle of next year we go straight into the group two where we have similar pipes and tanks to come on stream and we currently already started the procurement process so we started finding getting expressions of interest from these large tank suppliers um, and doing our vetting to make sure that we get the best um, value for money Right. But of course, with all of that, um, we know that, for example, in our rivers, um, the water levels are, are dropping. Um, if we are building more tanks and then the water levels are dropping, um, yes, we may get some heavy downpours from time to time, but we are get, we're also getting longer, drier spells. Um, have you considered all of that? And, and what are you doing in that regards to ensure that the tanks that we are building are not empty? Uh, there are some initiatives taken. Um, one system that is usually greatly impacted with the climate challenges is that of the less avocats. Um, that's in St. David's. Um, so one of the project initiatives that is being undertaken is we are currently doing, um, trying to implement a, a transition line project. It's called the Seven Sisters Project. And what we're basically doing, we are basically transferring water from, um, a, 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 with a, a, from a, an area with a great source of water, um, the Great River, um, having it pumped up uphill to the 1910 area and then transferred downstream to the Las Avocat. Um, <clears throat> we know that the, the area supplied by Las Avocat is usually badly impacted with a, with a dry season and droughts and so forth. Um, so we, we know that this initiative should be able to address this, pro this problem in a great way. Um, in Karakou, we have some other uh, complementing projects. Karakou, we know most of the water supply is from desalination plant, um, reverse osmosis. We're going to, uh, through an another project, a parallel project, we're going to be introducing a new plant where we're going to be um, increasing the supply of water to this, the tanks that we have earmarked for, um, for Karakou. Okay, wonderful indeed. Um, folks, um, um Quite eager to speak to Mr. Debaya on this, um, well, to me, new initiative, the um, non revenue water management. But we take a short break, and when we come back, we'll bring in Mr. Debaya. So stay with us. October 2nd, 2023, the Hubbard's Rewards Program will have some exciting new features to better serve you. Streamlined loyalty experience. That is, no more waiting for vouchers to be issued on a quarterly basis via traditional mail. Instant redemption. This means loyalty points earned can be redeemed immediately after purchase and apply towards your future cash purchases upon checking out. Check status. You can instantly review your reward points when checking out or on your printed receipt. Sign up today and start saving when you shop at any Hubbard's department, including the Food Fair and Grenadian General Insurance Company Limited. Please note that existing vouchers are still valid once not expired. Hubbard's, quality service, affordable prices.
Make your Christmas magical with 100% financing, no payment for three months, win cash prizes, and so much more. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. Trade Center, Monrouge St. George. For more information, call 444-5291 or 404-9012. Our environment is our responsibility. Budget Marine contributes by selling environmentally friendly products. For example, we sell lightweight open boats that require a relatively small engine. Best to combine with our Tohatsu four-stroke engines. They use little fuel and have a low emission. Carib Marine solar panels are specially made to withstand the Caribbean climate. The panels are suitable for use at home and on the boat. The required chargers and converters are also available from Budget Marine. Keeping your car and boat clean extends the lifespan. But residues of the cleaning products disappear in nature. We at Budget Marine sell eco-friendly cleaning products from EcoWorks, not harmful to nature and also clean very well. Plastic junk in our oceans is a major problem. Fortunately, there are companies that clean up and reuse the plastic into usable products. Marlow, manufacturer of lines and ropes, produces docking lines made out of plastic waste. Another company is Sperry Shoes. Sperry has a collection made from used fabrics and plastic waste. Just a few examples of how we at Budget Marine contribute to help protecting our environment. We care. It's a happier holiday when every wish and dream can come alive for those you love and cherish with a loan from Nexa Credit Union. Just think of the experiences you could share, the surprises you could gift, and the memories you could make with a little extra in your pocket this Christmas. Our happier holiday loan is about the happiness and warmth it can bring because there's no need to worry. Unwrap more than just gifts. Experience heartfelt connections and joyous celebrations with family and friends. Get up to $50,000 for home furnishings, renovations, gifts, and more while enjoying easy repayment terms, affordable interest rates, and quick approvals. So, dream a little bigger and enjoy discounts galore at our favorite partner stores. Make your holidays happier with Nexa. Call us at 440-1354. Visit our website at nexacreditunion.com or email us at loans at nexacreditunion.com. Nexa Credit Union, with you wherever your road leads. Do you have muscular pain that no one can find a solution for? Are you tired of taking meds for joints and other pains? Hills and Valley Medicare Center on Grenville Street, St. George is here to help you heal. We will help you map a path to your full recovery. Visit us Monday to Saturday for a consultation with our on-site doctor, physiotherapist, and massage team. You will be glad you did. Our Medicare Center, a proud member of the Hills and Valley group of companies. On the hilltop or in the valley, we are with you wherever life takes you. Hills and Valley Pharmacy. Your health is our business. Hubbard's is once again innovating the way you shop with its new online store, providing 24-hour shopping convenience. You can shop now for appliances, hardware, houseware, building material, and more. Free delivery island-wide. Start shopping now at hubbardshardware.gd. Safe, convenient, reliable.
Welcome back. It's our climate reality, and we're chatting with Mr. Terence Smith and Mr. Lind. Well, all three guests: Terence Smith, Lyndon Bullen, and uh, Thomas DeBaye, um with Nawasa, and of course, by extension, G Cruz. We're looking at climate change interventions. Um, you know, to our water sector. Just before we go to Mr. DeBaye, Terry, is there anything you would like to add to what Lyndon said earlier? before we move on? Well, yeah, I think Engineer Bullen, he, he, he elaborated on um, one of the larger com components of the J. Cruz project. To that, I can add that generally, I think the, the overarching response to your question is improve is integrated watershed management, mm -hmm. IWRM. That is what it entails. So we are going to be at the, the level of the, of the engineers we're going to be, um, you know, soliciting views from, you know, experienced um, persons from like forestry and, and um, forestry department of the Ministry of Agriculture. A couple of them may be retired already. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are going to be looking at, at putting some proposals together. We, of course, need to seek um, approval of the board of directors for Nawasa to be involved. Certainly, I, I would like to see that a school that way involved in some level of investment in improving the management of our catchments, in improving the quality of our watersheds, right, where the, um, everything starts from. The problem we face is that um, with the um, climate change impact of heavier downpours, because of the degeneration of the watersheds over many years and, and particularly after Hurricane Ivan, is you have um, a lot of siltation. You, you alluded to it in your, in your opening piece, Godfrey. Gravel, silt, mud, rocks, pebbles, branch, well, of course, branches and so, so forth, vegetation, um, come down with the, with the river and, and block our dams and intakes. And just about a month ago, in, 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 in my second week of, of rejoining Nawasa, there, was a, there were large parts of St. Andrews and St. Patrick's out of water for the weekend. So we, could have, we can have as many J. Cruz projects as we like over the next couple of decades if we do not do something to protect and enhance our watersheds. Um, we will continue to, um, to see trouble. Right. When, and you and know, of course, that, the, would, that would impact the quality of drinking water as well. Well, precisely. Well, and the quantity too, because if the dam is blocked and the plant has to be shut down, then, you know, we have, as we call it, outages. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, that is something I think that it is it's not an area that Nawasa has been active in. And we can ask ourselves, how many trees have we in Grenada replanted since Hurricane Ivan? How many trees has anyone um, replanted? So that is an area I think that needs to be explored. We need to, as I, I, I hate to use these cliches, but we need to, as they say, think outside the box. Box, of course. Mm -hmm. um, and we need to be, you know, creative and, and resilient in our thinking because, you know, climate change is, is upon us already. We had a significant drought for almost four weeks, uh, two months ago in the, in the middle of the hurricane and the rainy season. So <coughs> mm -hmm. uh, these are some, you know, some of the areas that we will be, um, we'll be seeking to focus on. Of course, we need to do a lot more public communication, right? We know, you know, PR, public communication, public education, and um, we are going to be um, focusing on these areas going forward. Okay, thank you very much, Terry. And of course, um, we have a few more questions that we will be putting out there, so we'll come back to you in a bit. Mr. Libaya, um, again, it's really a pleasure to have you. And of course, um, I was introduced to that, uh, that term earlier this week, non-revenue water. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about non-revenue water, NRW. Mm -hmm. um, Let's talk about the non-revenue water management. It, what is this non-revenue management uh, talking about? It's talking about, or it is a strategic, strategic, strategic approach that is aiming to minimize, in general, water losses within a network of a water utility. Um, this reduces, certainly, water leaks, uh, reduces the overall use of, uh, overall, uh, use of the water resource, for sure. Non-revenue water talks about 
leaks, talks about the inaccuracies of meters, talks about theft of water, talks about the general inefficiencies in the system of water distribution. So I brought you a nice little image to explain a bit what we are talking about when we are talking about non-revenue water. What do we know about the system of water distribution here on Grenada and all over the world in all the water utilities? So we are having water supplied by a dam or from a well going to a tank and then it's going to be distributed. And this distribution in our non-revenue water approach is distinguishing between the authorized consumption of water and the water losses we are facing. Let's start with the authorized consumption. Authorized consumption is on one hand what we call the built and authorized consumption. Built and authorized consumption is simply the water that we are facing on our water bill every month and we have to pay for. We also having these if you would show this image once again, the unbuilt authorized consumption. What is that? That is simply water that is distributed without being uh, yeah, invoiced, which means, for example, the, water, the hydrants that are used by the firefighters. A nice example for this unbuilt authorized consumption. Coming to the water losses, this is the other larger part. We are distinguishing between real and apparent losses. Real losses are what what is obvious, these are the leaks, and these are as well the losses that are in the production of water, so for flushing, for cleaning, and so on. And we are having what we call the apparent losses. Apparent losses is, unfortunately, also the theft of water. Um, this happens, not that much on Grenada, but it is, it is here. And apparent losses as well might be uh, other parts where people are yeah, using water um, in a way where that, that is not uh, legal. So I just started saying it is we are distinguishing between the authorized and the, and the water losses. But at the end, what is interesting for us is the part of non-revenue water. And this is the sum of the apparent losses, plus the real losses, plus the unbuilt authorized consumption. And on the opposite, we are having the revenue water. So this is the water that is built and that creates revenue for our water utility. Um, all this um, leads certainly to reduce the, the use of the water resources, so we conserve our precious resource, the water. It improves the service delivery of the water utility and it ensures the long-term viability of the water infrastructure, what we are also paying for with our water bills. And certainly and on the long term, all this leads on or helps to, uh, to enhance the water resilience and provides a reliable access to clean water for all the residents. In easier words, non-revenue water management is an approach to ensure that more water reaches to the consumers. It enhances the water supply uh, reliability and it promotes sustainable uh, sustainability by conserving this water resource. Our objectives in, in this non-revenue management approach we are working together in Nawaza is to reduce significantly the non-revenue water, so the water losses, and thereby conserving the water, water resource, and to enhance the operational efficiencies. And if we are coming to numbers now, the G Cruise approach has an indicator saying that by uh, 2024, in 15 district metered areas, so I'm coming later to that point to explain it, in 15 district metered areas, we are going to reduce this NRW number, non-revenue number, by at least 4%. What did we do here in Nawasa since, uh, yeah, I guess, a bit more than one year it is now? We have been starting to implement some pilots to test different approaches, the different tools um, for, for reducing the non-revenue water. So 
So we are doing, I just name it now, bulk meter monitoring. We are doing district meter areas, water balancing, DMAs. We are doing the minimum night flow monitoring. We are doing repair and maintenance monitoring. We do a reform in the customer complaint management and we are trying to implement a new digital asset management tool uh, in next year. Let me explain one of the tools, or starting with one of the tools, I called it bulk meter monitoring. That is a very, yeah, let's say, a simple approach, a starting approach. We are installing uh, specialized water meters at key points in the network. Unfortunately, um, these Water meters, the specialized water meters are um, yeah, right now installed but not yet fully monitored in a, in a regular way. So what we are doing, to explain it in a simple way, is we simply we compare the, the water flow in these bulk meters from one month to the next and we calculate what is the average flow per day that it was running through this specialized bulk meter. And just by comparing it to the previous months, you will find out if there's an increase or a decrease. Increase means that something has changed in the system. And we just had a nice example a couple of, in July it was, um, where we have been uh, yeah, observing a, an increase in the average daily con, uh, flow at Fort Judy, at the entrance of the Fort uh, Judy, uh, Judy Road. Um, from one month to the next, it nearly doubled. And so immediately the technical department of Nawasa was alarmed and was sending out a repair team, or first a leak detection team, and then a repair team to find, identify the leak and to repair the leak. And the result was obvious the next month, the flow in that area was the same as the previous months. So that is one of the of the tools. Right now, we are having about 56, now maybe three or four more of these bulk meters installed in the in the whole network of our old Nawasa. But that's far from being sufficient to monitor the full network. So I believe that we should install about 100 extra of these bulk meters. And we have to implement for sure then the, the uh, monitoring of these bulk meters uh, and to implement a, well, yeah, implement a real monitoring procedure so that there's an automatic uh, system and a person that evaluates these readings every month and then alarms the technical department in case of whatever happened. Another uh, task that I was uh, naming was the district metered areas water balance, DMA, district meter areas. So I was, yeah, we're having a nice image here. Uh, district meter areas, uh, areas are uh, uh, defined boundaries of the network or defined areas of the network where we are measuring all what is flowing in and all what is consumed. So therefore we have to first investigate in really in, deta in detail how the network is uh, established. So therefore we are using mapping uh, technologies, using geographic information systems, the, the GIS in Nawasa, and um, defined, we did it for, for several pilots now, um, defined up to now four really precisely defined and uh, investigated DMAs and did the water balance for these specific areas. Water balance, as I explained, inflow via consumption. We are doing the calculation of what has been uh, lost in that area and um, we all know there is a certain degree of, of, of water losses. It's uh, published every year by the Nawasa uh, annual report varies between 25 and 35 percent depending on the year. Um, but this overall value is, is not sufficient to, to work on or to, to take action on specific vulnerable uh, points of the network. So we need this approach, DMA approach, to calculate now in, in defined areas where are the losses 
are, are extremely high and which areas are extremely low and compare these and uh, yeah, take measures, so technical department should take measures to uh, uh, improve the system in these specific areas with high water losses. Once again, one of the pilots was the Fort Judy area, mm -hmm. yes. which shows unfortunately <coughs> about in an average about 45 percent of water losses and the technical department is continuously searching for leaks in this area um, due to the fact that the, these pipelines are all underground it, it's uh, it's quite complicated uh, you have been watching this this little map this was the the area of uh, in St Andrews where we just gave an example now these colored areas are different uh, each colored area is a is a specific DMA okay this is only a pilot and the first try but this has to be established over the whole island of Grenada and later also on Cariacou and Petit Martinique um, I, as we did not do the full investigation, um, I'm est only estimating right now that we have to create around 100 of these DMAs over whole Grenada. Another pilot that we tested, or another tool that we are using and we tested here in, in Nawaza, is what we call the minimum night flow uh, monitoring. Um, specific flow meters are installed in a, in, a, in a supply pipe, in a main pipe, supplying a defined area. The difference between bulk metering and this night flow monitoring is simply that we are now metering minute by minute what is or the speed of water that is running through this pipeline. By the speed we are able to calculate the quantity that is running there per minute and we are now searching for the lowest demand period so usually it's around three to four to five o'clock in the morning um, you just saw this little graph that was shown here at night time here it is uh, it is around four or five o'clock this is the Mount Horn area so Mirabeau area um, it shows that around this time there is the minimum uh, the blue line shows the the, uh, the flow so the minimum flow is around three or four what is it no four or five o'clock in the morning I'm sorry and I was putting here a green line this is the minimum night flow and as long as this minimum night flow night by night remains the same we are quite sure that there are no big yeah, let's say problems in this network. Okay. If this night flow goes up from one night to the next, there is either a, a huge consumer that just opened uh, the, the taps or there is a leak and most probably that's a leak. So this is uh, another of the one uh, of the tools that we are applying. We have been further on working on the repair and maintenance. We all know that repair and maintenance is, uh, yeah, is a key activity. And one of the problems is we are doing a lot of this uh, repair and maintenance in Nawaza, but the monitoring and the documentation is not yet really that perfect. So we are up to now have not been able to identify where exactly what kind of repair was done. So I was bringing here a, a photograph of a, a, a working a repair team just doing some repairs on a, on a water meter but you see they are using a, a tablet computer and this was is the new thing we are using now. We, we try to use and we have been applying for a certain time and will continue. We are using these tablet computers to register the G GPS data where we did this repair and now this GPS data including additional information what kind of repair was done, what was the diameter of the pipe and so on will be transferred automatically to a cloud and as a result we are able now if you would please open the next uh, map we are able now to pinpoint the different kind of repairs on different kind of pipelines on the map. 
right now it looks like something really strange, a lot of colorful points, but the next step that we are going to apply is to analyze this. Where are the vulnerable parts of the network? in detail, so where the repair has been repeated several times, or we could do, and this is then the, the next uh, uh, image I would like to show, we are using this information, uh, not the geographical information, but uh, the quality of the repair, to do some analysis where we have the, the, the highest yeah, uh, part of our repairs, what uh, what are the different kind of pipes? Here you are seeing that the half-inch pipes, repairs on half-inch pipes are covering more than 50% of the workload of Nawasa. And uh, the larger the pipe becomes, the, the lower the, the, the number of or the percentage of repairs is. This could be done not only for the diameter, also for the quality of the pipes and so on. Um, why we do this? We want to focus our efforts in repair, in maintenance, and also in, in, on investment for new pipes on the most vulnerable areas to reduce, in general, the, the, the large, uh, the high number of non-revenue water, of water losses by first working on the on the hotspots and push uh, postponing activities which are not really affecting the water losses to a second stage another task or another tool that we are going to implement uh, quite soon is we want to reform the customer complaint management. What is customer complaint management? It's nothing else than the hotline number or WhatsApp number uh, where anybody here on Grenada is able to report a leak or a different problem. Um, right now this feature is, let's say, it's not bringing us to the point that uh, the customer receives a very a quick response or a timely response on that uh, reporting of a leak. So this has to be improved by yeah, applying a new approach. I want, I'm believing that we, we should install a unique 24-7 telephone number where the customer could call this telephone number um, or the, the operator working on, on behind this telephone number should then have access to the geographic information system and the customer database so that the customer is able to explain and pinpoint the location where he found the leak or where he found the problem. And this information then should be transferred immediately to one of the repair teams um, including the, uh, the exact uh, location, so the, the coordinates of this uh, leak. Um, this would, in my eyes, reduce the response time, so the time between reporting the leak and repairing the leak uh, significantly. I know that some of the repair teams sometimes have to search for leaks for a longer period. Um, Another point or another part of this idea uh, is that we will try to integrate Google Maps waypoints or how you call this place marks in Google Maps. For example, that customers just click on, on, on WhatsApp, sending the, the location and doing a, a photograph with it and transfer it via WhatsApp or whatever to the Nawasa. So the, the, the the, the channel to report a leak uh, is is getting yeah, easy to use for everybody. Mm -hmm. Certainly this includes a training for all the employees that are working with that. Mm -hmm. um, and finally, I would say an important point is that by next year we are planning to uh, obtain and to implement a new digital asset management tool, so a, a larger software package, which should integrate all what I was explaining right now as, as different pilots and uh, support the, the, the employees of Nawasa in yeah, using these tools, um, these, this software is a, it's a quite comprehensive uh, uh, 
uh, let's say package with different modules um, we are just we are not yet decided who is going to provide the software but this is going to be decided quite soon and by 2024 we should have these uh, this uh, digital asset management tool in place and start to develop and train our stuff on on the use of that tool. All this should then lead to a overall reducing of water losses and then as I said in the beginning, yeah, reducing the use of our precious water resource and with this climate change this becomes more and more important. Yeah, I guess, I hope it's, it, I know it was extremely technical now but uh, sorry for that. It's a quite complex and wide, uh, wide approach, this non-revenue water management um, I could talk for hours if you like. <laughs> and of course we'll have you back. We definitely will have you back. But Terry, I, I want to ask you something quickly and, and then I want to come to um, Lyndon. Now, one of the things he mentioned that got my attention very quickly was the issue of the losses, the apparent and real losses. Now, a lot of times you, you go around and you see people using water. For example, um, someone may have their hose washing the vehicle and you know, doing that and something may come up and they would tell you, look, I am paying for that, so I'm, I'm, I'm using my water. Um, maybe not even thinking of, you know, the repercussions. Um, one, I'm, I'm sure Nawasa have given serious consideration to that kind of losses. How do you intend to approach that problem and, and, and sort of help reduce that kind of loss? Yeah, well, well Godfrey, let me just, uh, just a, a point, slight point of correction or, or clarification. If a customer is using water on their property mm -hmm. and that water is passing through their meter and they're paying Nawasa for that water, it is not considered to be part of non-revenue water. It is revenue water because the authority right. is getting paid for that water. Mm -hmm. The customer is not using the water wisely. They're wasting the water. Let us say we may have, we may be in an extreme drought situation and there are notices on the radio and so on. There are certain types of activities that would be not, um, would be discouraged, like watering of, of lawns and so forth. Um, it, it's so all over the world. In, 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 in parts of the United States, it's, you know, you follow the news and so on in California. There, there sometimes of weeks on end that uh, you know um, certain types of um, activities c cannot be used with the water, or, or water can't be used for those activities. Um, the response to that would be water conservation. Mm -hmm. So the wise use of the water. So so technically, it's revenue water. Mm -hmm. The non-revenue water management is to reduce that water for which Nawasa does not receive revenue. revenue for, oh. And obviously, if we could reduce, let's say we can save 100,000 gallons a day, for example, in the parish of San Andrew, over a period of time, that could be seen as equivalent to a small water treatment plant that's producing 100,000 gallons a day. Mm -hmm. That may cost the investment for that maybe three or four million dollars and you have to maintain it you know, going forward. So non-revenue water reduction is a very, very valuable entity because it means that you can forego having to build a new water treatment plant to provide that water, yeah? Right. Whereas if, if the customer is paying for that water, having gone through their meter, right. if they're wasting it, it's, it's, it's you know, injudicious use of the water, it's wasteful use of the water. So um, measures like, um, well, Linda made reference to it, um, um, water saving devices. There are these little aerators that you can put in your kitchen faucet or your bathroom faucet that would aerate the water. And you get the impression that you're using a certain volume of water to, you know, wash your hands and so, mm -hmm. but it may be 25 or 30 percent less, right? So the, the hand washing experience would be the same, but you may use 30 percent less. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's not as prevalent now, but you know, in the old days, Godfrey, when we were growing up and so on, a, a toilet, traditional toilet tank, when you flush that toilet, that, that toilet flushing for almost a minute long. Yeah and it might be five or five and a half gallons. 
Now the modern approaches, they, they, you can get a toilets that flush with as low as 1.4 and 1.5 gallons. Right, so these are so they, 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 there's um, there's um, aerators that for the for shower heads. I made reference to the ones for taps, you know, faucets and so on. The the water conserving toilets. There's the ones with with two buttons at the top, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you press one for a certain type of of use. You press one for the other type of use, and they would emit different volumes of water. Mm -hmm. So these are the, the water saving devices. So this is being promoted also under the GQOS project. Right. Mm -hmm. And a part of our public communication program that I, I made reference to earlier on. We will continue the water <coughs> conservation message. So I think that's the right. um, response to your question. All right. Thank you very much. Um, uh, Mr. Bullen, uh, just to continue from where Terry, Terry left off there, we know that um, GQOS plans to support the water sector by reducing water demand and uh, increasing water availability. Right. Um, speak a little more to that. All right, so, um, well, Thomas sort of spoken about uh, non-revenue water and so mm -hmm. on. And essentially what it is is about making our operations more efficient. Um, so, for example, the, the IT asset management software that he would have mentioned, that helps integrate all of the operations internally. Um, it also is, it helps to engage the, the consumers and um, we have more speedy responses to, to the water losses and so forth. In terms of reducing demands and so on, as I mentioned, of the five components of the project, um, I think components one and components two would be most significant in actually helping with the reduction of, of water. Um, usage or, or, or wastage. Um, as I said, there's going to be an implementation of a, a new water resource management unit. Um, there's going to be legislation put in place that will help um, support the management of how water is utilized and so forth. And also a, a tariff review. And again, with the public relations that Mr. Smith would have spoken to, um, we have the, the, the outreach to the um, tourism industry and also agriculture industry and also a large public awareness cam campaign both internally with Nawasa and the rest of the, the GQ's project management team. Okay, wonderful. Um, I, I, I hope you guys realize we're quickly going out of time, but Terry, um, climate change is occurring faster than the scientists anticipated, right? Um, uh, what other adaptation and mitigation measures are in place in the short and medium term um, for our water sector. Yes, Godfrey. Um, <clears throat> mitigation, as you have always um, elaborated on your programs, refers to measures to reduce our car carbon footprint mm -hmm. or, or the um, emissions reductions. So very briefly, um, again, under the GCRUS project, there's a component that's going to be promoting um, the widespread use of solar photovoltaics. I mentioned it. Yes. Um, Engineer Bullen um, can perhaps elaborate if there's a time. But there is an initiative afoot. Um, but perhaps I can mention it now, the, the um, collaboration <laughs> with Grenleck and the, per the Public Utilities um, Commission, Public Utilities Regulatory Commission, Commission PERC, for uh, widespread installation of solar PV farms by the authority to account for our um, power consumption, electricity consumption for the pumps and so on and so forth, um, borehole pumps and booster pumps in, in the system. And if that is successfully implemented, um, Nawasa could in the next two years, become the first carbon, you know, they use the term carbon neutral yes. mm -hmm. water utility in the region. So all of our uh, um, power consumption for all the different um, activities, the running of the you know, AC units in the offices and so on and so forth, as well as water on the water treatment plants and, and pumps and so, will be offset by um, solar PV. Um, so that's climate, mitiga that's climate mitigation. Mm -hmm. um, the 
my, my pet topic, um, Godfrey, in respect of climate adaptation is rainwater harvesting. Right. We've mentioned it kind of in passing. Um, Lyndon mentioned the, the um, you mentioned the initiative with the hotels and the initiative with the farmers. Rainwater harvesting, Godfrey, has been a way of life for generations on our sister the, isles of Karyaku and Piti Martinique. Yes, indeed. Why? Because of their size, because of their geology and their topography, they don't have rivers and streams and so forth. They, don't, they get a lot less rain. Um, for various reasons, um, rainwater harvesting has not really been mainstreamed and not really caught on in Grenada. And the authority, and it's a component of the J. Cruz project. It is endorsed by um, uh, Grenada's National Water Policy of 2020. It is endorsed by Grenada's Climate Change Adaptation Plan. It's endorsed by Grenada's Climate Change Policy. So there's, there's a very strong policy backing mm -hmm. for, for promoting rainwater, rainwater harvesting. Mm -hmm. We basically just need to get the job done. And I am hoping and I envisage that Nawasa going forward will be taking a more vibrant leadership role in promoting rainwater harvesting. Mm -hmm. So there, there are going to be a number of initiatives coming down, well, I guess I could say coming down the pipeline. Mm -hmm. um, I can't really go into any great detail as yet because it's, you know, kind of my early days yet. Mm -hmm. But there are going to be a number of initiatives. We have, we're having our first senior managers meeting tomorrow. And I would be certainly sharing my vision with the management team for initiatives on, on rainwater harvesting. But the idea is to mainstream rainwater harvesting on mainland Grenada so that it, it would never replace the municipal water system, which is based mainly on surface water extraction and just about 10% of um, groundwater extraction. But it can augment the municipal water supply at the household level, mm -hmm. thereby allowing, and, and particularly in areas of, um, of not of the best um, municipal water supply, some of the higher elevations, some of the elevations where the, the water treatment plants are not that large, and they're fairly large distribution areas. If our customers can augment 15% or 20% or 25% of their daily consumption by judicious use of rainwater harvesting and storage on site, then it would enable um, the authority. In other areas, perhaps areas that are at a higher elevation that were not well served will now be served. Mm -hmm. So that is one of the, plat the platforms that we'd be looking at, coupled with the non-revenue um, water management. Mm -hmm coupled with integrated water um, resources, integrated IWRM, integrated water resources management, catchment management, building the competence of our staff through training human resource development. These are the, 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 the planks, so to speak, on which Nawasa would be rolling out its development programs. Okay, wonderful. And then quickly, Ole, you mentioned about the number of tanks that are in, well, under construction. Um, any consideration um, for rainwater harvesting um, with, uh, along that line in terms of tanks? Um, if you might consider probably having a couple of tanks um, specifically designed to, um, you know, collect rainwater? Okay, so um, one of the activities on the project, um, so the pipes and tanks are already a separate package, mm -hmm. but one of the activities we are looking at is um, four pilot communal um, rainwater harvesting um, initiatives. So we have two locations already in Karakou where they already practice some level of rainwater harvesting, but we want to rehabilitate and optimize the way it operates. And then we have two locations on mainland Grenada where we're going to also introduce as a pilot some rainwater harvesting um, initiatives. And this is just a first step as we try to go forward with, with more of this um, rainwater harvesting goals in mind um, for a more national level. So okay. it is included also in the project. 
Wonderful. Gentlemen, um, there is so much more to talk about as it relates to our water sector and clearly um, the GQ's project, but we are out of time. Um, it's almost 10 o'clock and um, I know it's probably way past there is that time. <laughs> But um, gentlemen, let me just give you uh, maybe a minute each just to make any, any closing remarks. We can probably start with um, Thomas. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, to me, this yeah, opportunity to talk to the public on, on NRW, which is a quite complex uh, yeah, strategic approach, is great. It, I'm delighted to, to be able to show to the, the public in Grenada that Nawasa already has taken measures, pilot measures and also implementing measures and the staff of Nawasa is showing a very high motivation in implementing new tools to reduce the water losses. Just remember that what I said 30% so one out of three gallons of water produced by Nawasa is lost somewhere in the ground and reducing each percent of this is an, is an additional water supply for additional water users here on the island. Right. Thank you very much. I think what you just said just practically summarized N NRW. <laughs> Definitely. Um, Lyndon, your closing remarks? Yeah, well, um as I said, the, the, the steps that we are taking here would definitely put Grenada a step ahead of most of the Caribbean islands. Um, in interacting with other island utility companies, um, water utility companies, we see that they too have similar challenges that we do face, and our successes would also be able to assist them with their journey and trying to improve their um, operations. And I, I think it's a learning curve that we all must face together, and Together, I think we could reach to that final goal of improving our operations and so on. Thank you very much. Mr. Smith, you have the final word. Yeah, Godfrey, what can I say? Um, I've been saying to my colleagues and all staff members and, and to my board of directors, <coughs> Nawasa's, we, we, we envision that Nawasa in the, in the um, perhaps medium term can become a center of excellence of water supply. In the in the at least in the sub region, whether you're in on the Lance and Gove, or you live in River Road, or you live in Lansapine or Westerhall Point, Nawasa's mission is to provide water to all its customers, drinking water, potable water, to all customers of an adequate quality, the right pressure and the right consistency, in other words, 24-7. That is really the mission of Nawasa, and um, I think the GQ's project, we also, we didn't have time to talk about the UK SIF project, um, for which a uh, very experienced um, civil engineer was hired and started, I think, yesterday or the day before, right? For the UK SIF project, which is a 19 million US dollar project that has to be implemented in the next two years. Perhaps we can speak about that, that the next time around. Mm -hmm. But in a nutshell, the G Cruise project and the initiatives that my colleagues have spoken of. In the next two years, once we complete the implementation, once we are successful in you know the, getting you know the public to. Um, uh, what get, should I say? Get, getting get the public, the getting the buy-in, getting the the, um, um, the 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 input of members of the public and, and so forth, um, we can make a significant impact, positive impact, on Grenada's public water supply. Thank you very much, Terry, and of course, Mr. Bullen and Mr. Dubai. Thank you very much for accepting the invitation to be on the program. We do understand how important um, the issue of climate change is and how we can seriously impact our lives in every possible possible way. I just want to close by saying, folks, climate change impacts the water cycle by influencing when, where, and how much precipitation falls. It also leads to more severe weather events over time which can also impact our water supply so be mindful when you use water if you don't need to 
don't. Thank you very much and join us next week for our final episode of season two of Our Climate Reality. Go have a good night. All the best. Our Climate Reality comes to you compliments. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. Classic Lighting, Budget Marine Grenada, Spicer Imaging Center, Habats, Grenada Paper Products, Quick and Easy, Royal, and Horizon Paper Towers. <laughs>